I want to say something heartfelt to my friend Artie. Yeah. I was going to say it to you off the air, and I probably should, but I'm not good off the air. Uh oh. What is this? Another intervention? No, 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 no. No intervention. In fact, I was thinking about it. I don't want to intervene in his life. He's perfect. He's perfect. I've realized, I've come around. He's perfect for us, anyway. Exactly. Well, here's what I want to say to you. Go ahead. I'm going to get a little emotional about you. Really? I was thinking about yesterday's show. Uh huh. And I was um, uh, very, very uh, grateful to you. You stepped up a couple of times yesterday. You uh, particularly shine with Beetlejuice when you went to war with him. <laughs> oh, this is all the black man's yeah, money I got. Gold money? It's my fucking money. Uh, so Fuck is you. your money. <laughs> fucking Jew. Yeah, so is your tits. You look like a girl. <laughs> so is your tits. Open the you tell him, Beetle. <laughs> then your brilliant uh, soliloquy of The Godfather, your, uh -huh. your complete memorization of entire scenes from The Godfather were totally entertaining. Uh -huh. And that's great. And listen, you're here because you're funny, and, and certainly you earned your spot here, and everyone loves you. But you've done something that I, I was reflecting on you this past week. Really? Yeah. And you God. did something that I thought was terrific and makes The Howard Stern Show very special. And you would never guess what my favorite Artie moment was for the past, I don't know, last week or so. God, I'm dying to hear Okay, Jeez, the last week, I don't even remember. Even, I think it might have even happened this week, but I have no... Was it when I, I, shit, was, should I shit my pants Thursday? Oh. Well, don't get uncomfortable with this. I know, uh, I'm already I'm uncomfortable with it. I'd rather, you, I'd rather you insult me. <laughs> uh, we had the cancer kid in here yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I was here having a meeting with Tim Sabian. I was uh, working on some of the ideas I have for the channel. And it must have been about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, Tim said to me, uh, oh, uh, Artie took the kid, the cancer kid to lunch with a bunch of people yesterday. Right. Now, I mean, you didn't have to do that. The kid was thrilled and all of that. Well, wait but... a minute. I wanted to do that. Artie uh -huh. both did that for me. And I didn't get a chance. He hid that kid from me. Well, whatever. <laughs> I was hiding him. Don't, don't feel competitive. You've done your share. <laughs> <laughs> but you did that yesterday and uh i i yelled at the news department for not covering it but in they a way didn't cover it. i'm kind of <laughs> glad they didn't because it was a private thing and that uh, maybe it was even more special to this kid yeah uh, i said how could Shuli sit there and eat lunch with you and not think to bring out his dumb tape recorder <laughs> and Shuli maybe was at the <laughs> lunch he yeah. was there I, yeah. we, we, the news could have had a half hour special out of that god knows what went on what did Artie talk about what did the kid talk about what kind of newsman is Shuli? he's not he's a he's a <laughs> some sort of stand-up comic that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> and then I had a whole incident where uh, Penny Crone grabbed me at about 2.30 yesterday in the afternoon oh. and said, can I interview you about your tattoos? And I said to her, you know, it's funny, Artie just took the cancer kid to lunch. I'm shocked that nobody covered it. She goes, oh my God, I was standing right here when that all went happened and I didn't uh, cover it. Oh and my goodness, she's still waiting for the tattoo story. Well, she was, wait, she yeah. was right in the middle she of the spent five, She spent five hours waiting for the tattoo story. <laughs> I turn my back and then she starts crying hysterically. Oh, no. What? Because she was very upset with herself for not, I said Penny. My <laughs> my point in bringing it up wasn't to, uh, I Sometimes you don't see something, you, you know, and maybe your point in not covering it was it was sort of a nice thing to happen to this cancer kid. And uh, maybe you want well, to... they didn't have to make a whole production no. of it necessarily, but they certainly could have I wasn't told mad. a story. I wasn't mad at Penny. I didn't feel she missed a story. Sometimes it's not obvious, you know. It just was obvious to me at that moment that that might have been an interesting story. That's, that's a pretty obvious hey, story. Oh, there's Penny crying in the hall. <laughs> oh, no. I had, I, I had to cradle her for 15 minutes. Poor Penny. Oh, oh, Penny's there. I think she's losing yeah. it on this job. Oh, she yeah. Is. She's losing it. She's a terrific woman. I think she lost it in the 60s, but <laughs> this is not helping. But anyway, <laughs> what I want to say to you, Artie Lang, employee of the week. Yes. <laughs> your uh, your funny factor yesterday, of course, was greatly appreciated by the whole audience. Right. Uh, but the favorite moments I had was when you uh, did these two gestures. Your that, human factor. That mm. no one really paid attention to. And uh, I thought it was very special. That's nice. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. It was weird with the cancer kids because it's like they were, they got a kick out of watching me eat. I could tell. Like every time I took a bite, they, they got excited for some reason. Where did you take them? We went to Del Fresco's, which is a great oh, restaurant. You that's know? A, a very expensive restaurant. And too. I'll tell you what, they treated us very nice. We had 10 people. They gave us a room all the way in the back. And yes, it was very expensive. <laughs> but they, uh, they, they couldn't have been cool. They were, they were both Yankee fans. We talked about the Yankees. And it's funny, like my guys are old timers to them. They're like all oh, the old timers. 
timers like Craig Nettles and stuff. And, oh. and uh, <laughs> it's funny. I ordered dessert in a way just to please them. I was kind of stuffed. And I said, what these guys want to watch me eat a piece of cake. <laughs> How many uh, sodas did you have? I don't know. You know. I had a few sodas. I had a big veal chop, which was wonderful. Um, what I, does a veal chop come with? Uh, well, it's like, you know, everything is sort of a la carte. you got to order sides like a steakhouse. So I got a side of uh, uh, a shrimp uh, cocktail, sautéed mushrooms. A side of shrimp cocktail? Yeah. <laughs> Holy mackerel, a side. You that sounds shrimp. like another entree. That's, another, that's a, at least an appetizer. Right. I like that it's a side. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and, you know, and then I have a side steak. <laughs> and then yeah. afterwards, uh, they had that chocolate warm molten cake. Wait, you're, you're skipping over yeah, the whole meal. Yeah, you had, yeah, yeah. You had, I had a uh, veal chop. Veal chop. I, I started out with the house salad, which there is covered in bacon. It's right. the most unbelievable bacon. Blue cheese ever. dressing? or uh, I had vinaigrette, but wow. I, I had a big roll with it and butter. And How many rolls? I dunked in there. You know, they get those big steak uh, restaurant rolls. about two Butter. Uh, you oh, never, yeah, I you it, have yeah. to have the butter. I buttered it, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the veal chop was fantastic. How and, thick? Oh, uh, very thick. You've been there, Rob. It's yeah. great there. And uh, uh, a big shrimp cocktail, uh, sautéed mushrooms, and... Um, and then, yeah, I was a little full, and I had to go back to Jersey to deal with some business bullshit. And I, I, I said, these kids want to see me. They kept going, hey, Artie, you want a piece of cake? And I was like, all right, I'll have a piece of cake for the kid. <laughs> now, there's an interesting dynamic. You yeah. invite uh, you, you invite these cancer kids, the cancer kid and his cousin, to go to lunch with you. But a lot of people glom on to the action, like Scott the Engineer. Well, let me be fair about this. Yeah. Sal, <laughs> Sal, the stockbroker, is, you know, is a good guy. He was going to take. I think they were all going to take them out to Benihana. And I, yesterday, I, you know, I felt good and I had a little adrenaline going. I had some time to kill. And I said, let's all go eat. And they said, the cancer kids. You know? I said, well, let's everybody eat. They were going to go to a restaurant further away. And I said, let's just go downstairs. <laughs> and it's more expensive downstairs. And right. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to force anybody into anything. So I said, look, I'll pay for it. You know, I, of course. I, it's, on, it's on me. Is that when Scott perked and up? And then Scott, I asked Scott. Oh, Scott I heard you yes. glommed in. Wait a minute. Hold on. I asked Scott. Hold, and he hold, said, on. Yeah. hold on a minute. <laughs> I was standing in the hall, and Artie goes, who wants to go to lunch? Yeah, that's what I said. I and didn't even glom. He no, said, he said, yeah. he said, who wants to go to lunch? I said, all right, I'll Does go. Did Scott reach for the wallet at I all? Did. <laughs> I offered him money. Uh, yeah, I yeah, said yeah, to yeah, Penny yeah. in the halls, I said, you at least had a cover. <laughs> How Scott makes the move at the end. And she goes, Scott's very poor. He makes very little money. Oh, and I go, no. I go, I go, oh, what, is he singing his tail? No, <laughs> it wasn't. No, it was, yeah. we, we got into something else. But I offered him money. Now, you know, he's right. I would yeah. I would have paid. You know, right, I only right. had a burger. I didn't order like a steak or anything. I just had a burger. I'm just kidding with you. So and I would, I'll give him money right I, now. I, I mean, no, you had a thirty eight dollar burger. Give him the money. I want to see. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> he acts like the Dude, burgers are I'm too busting your job. What was the uh, What was the tab over at Del Monaco? Uh, about five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. It was, ten, it was ten of us. Wow. That's amazing, Artie. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Whatever. What am I gonna do with my money? I don't ski or anything. Any know. drinking going on or just? Uh, uh, no, I didn't drink. I didn't drink. Just strictly food. And the two kids, the kids were really nice. A really great kid. You can Cancer tell... kid can't eat much. He's got the chemo going. <laughs> right, that's what I figured. He probably threw up that 50 bucks <laughs> life you brought him. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you could tell how big a fan they are of the show. And they took pictures, and uh, yeah, it was it was nice. But it... you could tell that Artie really felt for them. During the show, he gave uh, <laughs> one of the kids a box of the devil dogs. Wow. <laughs> that's unbelievable. <laughs> and he signed it, too. And yeah, he signed wow. it. And then he signed a bottle of Jack Daniels to the other one. The kid who was of age. But... Yeah, 21. <laughs> Just turned 21. <laughs> They're not that much kid. You know what's funny? You can tell how people love the show, like what they like. You, you, we're afraid we're abusing people with some of the dark shit we do, but you know what that cancer kid said to me at lunch? What I, he, what, he goes, oh man, I was hoping you were going to do the wah. <laughs> <laughs> He wanted you to wag? Yeah, I, I said, you wanted that? He's like, yeah. yeah. where were you on? Like, you wag. know, come to think of it, I take back everything I said. You were too sympathetic. He goes, I thought you were going to do the wag. I got cancer. I was like, oh, Christ. Yeah, that, you know, that was a perfect move for you. That would have been the, the key move. Yes, sir. Oh, I had hit you with a two-by-four, though. And, uh, if you're interested in going back. <laughs> you should have beat him with a hammer. <laughs> Going back to that story you were talking about, already taking the kid out to lunch and the news not covering it, and Penny crying. If you go to your page in red, oh. I have the tape of Penny crying. How'd you get that? Uh, someone started taping in the hallway yesterday. All right, here's Penny Crone crying after I told her she missed the story. Here you go. I was standing right here. I've been here for five hours. Come here. Come here. And then Liz it's gets John mad. I, I, I don't want to get you mad. I already, you're 100% right. I'm not, I'm not mad. I, I'm, 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 I just, I, I, Shut up, Ronnie. Oh, my goodness. Do you have more of that? Because she was going for a while. Let me see. Let me... There was a huge thing going on in the hall. She cries a lot. You know, she cried, um, she cried once 
We did a, a, a press conference. Is she stable? No, no, but no. She, does. She, t- she talks about she cries a lot. And weird things make her cry. I don't know if you remember, but one time John DeBella pointed at her. Yeah. You remember he pointed at her? And she and started crying. She started crying. She goes, I don't like people pointing at me. Yeah. Don't point at me, okay? All right? I don't like them. All right? I don't even know you, and I don't like I don't point at you. I can only All right? Right, exactly. And now I'll point at you. I hate that. No, I hate that. I just hate that. I'm Italian. Pardon me. I talk with my hands. Penny, you hate John? No, I hate being pointed at. Are you, you know, crying? I no. You are crying. Yeah. Penny, you're crying. I am not. I just, it just. <laughs> you're crying. Don't you have multiple personalities, too? <laughs> so she gets like, uh, she's out there. You want to see her cry? Let her live with Artie for a month. I'm yeah. standing right here. I've been here for five hours. Come here. Come here. <laughs> she waited five hours for me outside my office while I was having meetings to ask me about my tattoos while the biggest story was going on downstairs. That story passed her by. You know yeah. what's hilarious about the dynamic out there? I walk outside and the, the kid Greg he goes, what happened with Beetlejuice? And I, go, I don't know. We started arguing about blah, blah, blah. Beetlejuice. And I, I take a second <laughs> of stepping right here. Do you have any tattoos? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm standing right here. I've been here for five hours. Come here. There I am. Come here. Oh. And then Liz gets John, mad. Not, I, I don't want to get you mad. I want you 100% right. Well, I'm not mad. I'm, 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 I just, I, I, Shut up, Ronnie. <laughs> you got to get the rest of that tape. All right, I'll pull more tape. By, yeah. by the way, you know, you know, Sal was at that lunch. He could have taped it. I know. No one taped it. Scott, the engineer, Shuley, uh, Tim Sabian knew about it. I mean, uh, Sal's part of the show. I mean, he's down there just, you know, it's not just time for him to eat. He should think of these things. Yeah, t- I'm sitting in a meeting with Tim, and he goes, you know, Artie took the cancer kid to lunch. I go, is anybody taping it? Anybody? anybody? He, and Tim writes it down on his pad. I go, Tim, it passed. <laughs> you don't write it down on your pad. He goes, he know he goes, the next time. He goes, well, I'm going to tell the news department they missed it. I go, oh, good. Uh, okay, great. Well, you know what? Now we yeah. got to get another cancer kid in. we got to go through the whole <laughs> yeah. thing again. It wasn't uh, that eventful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you got in your hand? Howard didn't even catch on. That's it, okay. The audience did. <laughs> well, Greg, fucking, here comes a guy over here. <laughs> okay, okay, you got me. You got me. You got me. Oh, it's going in your mouth. It's going in your mouth. <laughs> I will, are you, are you I will throw with, you on the ground and put this up your ass. Are you angry with me? No. <laughs> oh, my God. A lot of pent-up hostility, guys. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's going to get so pent-up. You know what? You know what? That's exactly right. You've got to come up with a new yeah. plan, man. So, I don't know. I just, you know, so I wasn't mad at you. What's great about the news department is they're mobile. They can go after the show and follow. That tattoo story will be there tomorrow. Yeah, that tattoo story. I think the question is, how many tattoos do you have? Three. Where are they? <laughs> 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 Sandwich. I got you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, man. I don't know why. The shit that should piss me off makes me laugh. Like, I think that's really funny. I don't know why. Dude, don't make a mess. Uh, no, this will make it. They're going to have a shit fit here. Every time Gary thinks he's going to be one up on me, I always get him back. You're never going to beat me, Bowie. Never. <laughs> 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 Well, I would have liked to have heard the conversation, a report on what you were eating. It would have been nice to hear the kid say, Artie, I thought you were going to hit me with the wet. The kid yeah. made a great joke, though. Like, down there they have those great desserts where they put that chocolate molten lava cake in this little, like, cradle of that looks like, you know, a breading thing. Right. And it's I'm, and I'm enjoying it and everything, and the cancer kid goes, that looks like Beetlejuice's diaper. And oh. I went, oh. Oh. And I went, you know what? That's exactly right. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just... You know, so I wasn't mad at anyone. I just was I was trying to sort of say, hey, guys, we got this whole news department. 
That you know, don't wait around to ask me about my tattoos. Don't be so stuck on your tattoo story that yeah. you miss the art. Yeah, taking the cancer kid the lunch story. What's great about the news department is they're mobile. They can go after the show and follow people that around. That tattoo story will be there tomorrow. Yeah, that tattoo story. I, I, the question is, how many tattoos do you have? I got three. Where are they? I got my pinky, back of my neck, and my arm. Oh, what are they? I got, you know, it occurs to me, Artie's having a cancer kid for lunch. Why are you guys not covering that? They won't cover that, but if Artie's throwing up on a sub sandwich, they'll be right there. And then Penny goes, oh, my God, I was standing right there. And I didn't, and then she started crying. And th There's a bunch of pictures of me consoling her in the hallway. Put them on HowardStern.com on my website where I can't find anything. We should do a cartoon, uh, like a political cartoon, of 9-11s happening in the background and Penny's asking somebody, what uh, they have a tattoo? tattoo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. I was standing right here. I've been here for five hours. See a plane going into the building? You're going to make her cry again. It was like the Godfather. She was like ready to hand in her resignation. I go, Penny, it, 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 there'll be other stories. Gets gets mad mad I, I, I don't want to get you mad, Howard, and you're 100% right. I'm not, I'm not mad. I, I'm, 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 I just, I, I, Shut up, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie's fun to have around in that situation. Meanwhile, Penny's crying hysterically. Doug Goodstein walks over, and he takes out his camera and starts taking pictures of a hysterical woman crying. <laughs> that was actually video. I was shooting video. I have the whole thing on videotape. Oh, do you? Yeah, that was a little video camera, and I took stills. Those are the stills from the video. Do you have the sound? Yeah, that's what you're listening to. Oh, that's, that's what, no called. kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. More, yeah. Oh, great. You, that's your film for the film festival. Yeah. <laughs> Doug has become Penny. completely desensitized uh, to people's feelings. Like, no, like in no, Vegas, no, no. if I had started dying, you would have set up camera angles. Yeah, well, they I, wouldn't have called anyone. <laughs> I no. even said, I even said to Doug, Doug, you're sitting here laughing at Penny. I go, you're from in in, in demand. You guys should have been down there filming the lunch. <laughs> I learned about it when you did. I, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. But no. the funniest thing, talk about desensitized, is Ronnie was sitting there giggling the whole entire time. I have a couple of frame grabs of that, too. But he's literally, oh, like, he's like, chuckling, he's, like, right in her face. Her. Oh, right yeah. in her face. He was having a good laugh. So funny. So was I. <laughs> I was standing right here. I've been here for five hours. Come here. Come here. <laughs> gets mad. I don't want to get you, you mad. Howard, and you're 100% right. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm, I just, I, I, shut up, Ronnie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> shut up, Ronnie. There's still a way to cover this story. They can yeah. get in touch with the kid and see what it was like for him and the whole moment, thing. Moment's gone. No, I'm not saying they can capture that moment. It's still a story there. Hey, Howard, if you go to CD1, yeah. just because I wanted to get it to you quick, it's the it's the entire conversation out in the hallway. Oh, good. Okay. I listened to the first like minute and a half, and I just wanted to get it in. All right. Penny, you got to relax, man. What's going on, Penny? Penny, I'm worried about you. Man, you're locked up. like a loser bit on me. Penny, Penny, not every... Oh, you my man, Julie. No. Yeah, I am. I'm mad at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Not my penny. Who's that? Who's man? I'm in. Scott, the engineer. I'm doing. I'm doing the follow-up. Liz, I, I think. There's three great stories going on here. Scott went out. Let me pause. Yeah, Here's, who is? Who all are right. all the people? Penny's crying because mm -hmm. she missed the story of already having lunch with the cancer kid. With that, Liz Aiello, the news director who's Penny's boss, comes in and hears that everyone missed a story <laughs> and Shuli was at the lunch. She's going berserk and she's angry. I'm trying to calm the situation down by saying I only brought it up to explain that this might have been a good story, not to sit here. Penny's screaming now. She's going to get Shuli in trouble and That's she's going to get herself in trouble. And then Ronnie's laughing in her face because he's <laughs> waiting for me because we're going to go outside. And uh, Goodstein's there taping all this, smiling. It was, he was laughing his ass off, man. It was funny. Now, has it returned for hours now? He, no, he came back and he left. He went home. He went home. So he had a big fat lunch. And he went. So now I'm complaining. I go, at the very least, I go, where is Scott the engineer having a two-hour lunch on Artie's dime? And why is he not here doing any work? I said, at least tape that part of the story. <laughs> Um, where is so now I got oh, him in trouble. No, I knew about it. I, I found him and Jim about the lunch. This has nothing to do with you. Don't cry. Uh, no, I missed it. I was standing right here. I've been here for five hours. Come here. Come here. I got, I got invited to lunch, and I said I can't go. And then Liz it's gets mad. I, I, I don't want to get you mad, Howard, and you're 100% right. I'm not, I'm not mad. I I'm, I'm, I just, I, I, shut up, Ronnie. Not everyone comes up with these ideas. Hey, I forgot to what are you hitting me for? <laughs> so I, the other story is, who paid for this thing? I heard Artie. Artie paid. Of course. And Scott, did he do it? 
get the ball. I'll take care of this guy. This guy doesn't have any money. He's got a horrible pension. Yeah, but I like how he loses the pension. Pension. He's got no pension. What, no, with IBEW from CBS, he's telling me it's... Yeah, yeah, you get his oh, yeah, let's all cry. Yeah, he man. wants you crying. For okay, you know what he's, he's he says like, he only made 60000 a year for the 20 years yeah, he was he only buys cigarettes, so he's got like $20 million in the bank. And what, <laughs> he doesn't go anywhere. He picked the right career. And then uh, the other story is that... Uh, oh, I don't know, I forgot. But I think it was a half-hour special here. He said it was a half-hour special. Oh, Penny, you could have won the Pulitzer. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. She's going to kill me. Don't go back. You're not alone. That's the other story. And I got Shilly in trouble. Mike, her yelling at you and then put it on the air. Are you emergency John, meetings? come on. Get to work. Oh, what are you yeah. doing? I'm so, I owe you one. I am so sorry. Stop it. it, it look at the face on her. No, no. See, these, I was having a, a philosophical discussion with Tim about news. And I said, Tim, you know, the news has got to go beyond the studio where where wherever it goes that's what's so great about them they're completely portable and he goes yeah you know like Artie just took the Make-A-Wish kid out for lunch I go whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Me too. yeah I go wait a second Tim that's a killer story like why don't we take that he says write it down <laughs> no one no one listen to me it's not always obvious it should be I mean that's what we get paid for when they said, do you want to go? And, well, and then, we're not paying you anymore, so that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should not get paid for that. No, you're right? getting paid. <laughs> no, the, the point I is, like the tattoos. when story. they said we're taking it's the nice. Michael Wish. <laughs> I, wait, I was waiting there. <laughs> I even Thank said God. to Liz, I missed the noon show. I said, Honey, I, those Rob, questions you asked me about the tattoo you, were unbelievable. You <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. I feel mad now. <laughs> Penny, a million people missed it. Well, uh, Shuli, now I'm in. Sh did you yell at Shuli? Yes, I did. See? I, I yelled at the whole newsroom. Oh, great. Did everyone That's you. <laughs> it's not you. You better go home. I was yelling at Tim. <laughs> and then Tim could have yelled at you're me. Low, you're a low man on the totem pole. I felt so bad. Yeah. When I see a woman cry, oh, forget it. Oh, I'm the same what way. What does that do to a guy? Because I know no guy can stand to see a woman well, cry. Well, I, you know, my mom was. It's my kryptonite. My mom was depressed for years, so she used to sit at the table when I'd come home from school and scream. She, she would be crying. Oh. And then, and then she would, you know, talk about killing herself, and and then I, I so like when I see a woman crying, I'm like, oh no. She's oh. gonna kill herself. Yeah, she's gonna like, oh no. Hey. <laughs> Why am I a coward? Because we're out there. Yeah. And Doug's a piece of crap, too, in my opinion. Okay. You stand there and laugh. I didn't laugh. I have, like, I have, um, Why, just had a shot. It makes me no, smile. Yeah, no, when I said to you, when I asked you, I came, I said, when Howard was out there, and I asked you specifically. Yeah. I said, I was out here. I made a mistake. Ronnie knows I was out here right. for five hours. Right. Right. You I should, should, I should have said, right, you're full of shit. You just stood there like this. Like, I you always stand there like this. You know, it's like... What do you want me to and do? And then you with that stupid little piece of shit camera. What was that? That's the only thing I had to Why is it always about. everybody else's fault? It's not everybody else's fault. Why are you blaming me like for? You guys are my did friends, and you should have come to my defense. I did. You. It's the show, though. What are you talking it's about? It's the show. I said you were here back here the whole time waiting to do a story. No, and then, no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Go back and listen to the fucking tape. Yeah, you, all right, you want me to? Yeah. Because I got a copy yeah. of it. Go ahead, listen go to it. You didn't open your fucking mouth once. Not once. And I've known you 20 fucking years. You should have said to Howard, you know what? What's wrong with her? I don't know. I, I just came to do another story. She likes us. No, I'm oh, leaving. Oh, 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 Penny, Penny, Penny. What? Talk to me. What's the matter? I'm, I just, I, you know what? It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I got to go. Because Liz is going to come in. She's going to kick my ass again. Hello. This is the Howard Stern show. Get used to it. This is the way it is here. What does everybody, that mean? Everybody gets thrown under the bus here. I get thrown under all the yeah, time. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like you've under. been throwing me under the bus more than anybody. What? I stood out here. I stood up and ate my lunch, waiting. I know that. Waiting. And you should have said to Howard, she's working hard. That's all you had to say. She's doing a good job. You should have said that to Howard. What did you say that was bad? Well, I didn't I say anything. You should have come to my defense and said she couldn't go to the lunch with Art. I said you couldn't. You, you didn't go to the Go listen to the fucking tape. Now I'm mad. Because go listen to the tape. And I said to him, she stayed back here to do the tattoo story. And that's why she didn't go to lunch. Right. When did you get that camera? And that you were invited. You, I said you were invited to lunch. It's one of the best cameras on the market for uh, for digital video. Oh, don't get, oh, baby shithead. I just want you nuts. I, I don't want to go there. I'm out of here. I'm not talking. Hey. I'm talking. Hey. No, no, no. 
Hey, I gotta go. Just talk to me, right? No. <laughs> why, why are they? Don't get why the naked so women that we're they, doing the Sibian. Why? Why are you so upset with them? They were. They were just. They were just observing. They didn't come to my defense. They should have come to my defense. I stood out there for four hours waiting for Robin. And you get out of here, too. I'm, I'm just not in the mood. Well, no. What did I do? No, you didn't do anything. I do anything. <laughs> trying to get your story on tape. I got to No, don't, don't... You know, you're a bunch of snakes. Why? Hey. Why don't you just have hidden cameras? I'm doing a story on you today and what a pig you are in your office with Richard. Yeah, but what are you getting on me for? I haven't done a thing to you. I invited you to that lunch and you couldn't because you had a story and I backed you right. up. Apologize. What a bitch. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Go take your camera to the Sibian girls, okay? Hey, well, why are you so upset when it was really... Hey, come here. Really so Ronnie, what you feel, man? Come on. No, no. I, I'm why, was it, why was it Ronnie's fault? Because I don't want to get... Look, you're on the air. We'll talk later, okay? Can we do that? When you're on the air, I no, respect that. No, we're talking that. now. No, I'm a professional. I respect that. I'm out of here. If you were a professional, you would have been at the lunch yesterday covering it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was good. So, Penny, you're leaving upset with Ronnie yeah, and Doug? I love you. I'm mad at Doug. I love I'm mad at Penny. Ronnie. When Howard came out, they should have said Penny's been here all day. I didn't know that. I just got back. I just walked in and saw you for two seconds. I was out all day myself. What's your problem? What is though? this? It's, it's a something, shit like mine. It's, it's something you should have brought to you the lunch yesterday. Friends. You had two beautiful, It's a recorder that you, you should have brought to the lunch girls yesterday. You sitting on the Sibian. Why? What do I have to do? Uh oh, you're it's hurt. Now he's pissed. He's throwing now you he's out, hurt. Penny. He's throwing you out. You've been tossed by security. What did he say? He said, get out of the stern show, beat it. Oh, he wasn't talking to me. Yes, he was. You weren't talking to me. Yes, I was. <laughs> you heard him. Get out. Can we, we are on the, they are on the air right now, George. Are they, should you not respect a little piece? Like when Howard meditates? Well, why did you come back here and start a whole I came shit? back to talk to Lisa G. No, you about, didn't. You started a whole shit with me. No, you why started it. You, you started Would you take that camera and shove it up your ass? Penny, come on. Penny, come on Penny, why are you getting mad? Penny, why are you getting Penny, mad at me? Penny! Penny! Penny. On, Penny. He see with this camera. Penny, why are you getting mad at me? I Don't you have two beautiful women sitting on a Sibian? What the fuck are you doing with me? Now, Liz is going to get mad at me. You better go to bat with me. Tim is another issue, Sabian. He's another... We can do with this thing. Come on, I'm recording What is you. that, you faggot? It's a recorder. <laughs> Stop. I'm going in the NFL offices. Can I come in? Come on, Thanks. these guys have to work. Penny. Don't do that. Yes, Scott. What are you going to tell me, an asshole, for? I mean, you know. Because you weren't here. You're glomming off Artie's free lunch for the, the cancer The second time kid. I've gone out to lunch in, he since we've been here. No, no, no. I just I, to look around the room. Whoever's yeah. having a good time, I, I like to pick on. Why should <laughs> that's why I want to have a good time when I'm not? Finally, you know, finally I get to have a good time, and he uh, fucking you ripped picked me. The, you picked the wrong day not to be. I, I, I sure did. 2.15 working, and I see, I look around. Nobody's here. Everyone's Apparently, out to lunch. Apparently, taking Scott to lunch is just like taking a cancer kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so pitiful. I almost yeah. got cancer. And why, and why is Penny... <laughs> Um, broadcasting my personal conversations with her. I what know. the hell's Why wrong? Are you having what them? the hell's wrong with her? Uh, I'm gonna make story. her cry again. She was sticking up for you. That's in 1978, they cut my salary again. Yeah. I want to know all that stuff. They should do a profile of Scott where he's just doing all of his complaining. I know. I, I wasn't bitching. She. Oh my God. No. She I just, don't know about the CBS IBE pension plan. What she, is the, the problem talk to with Scott for five minutes and you'll know? <laughs> no, she was like, you were you were in the union over there. You must have a huge pension. I go, no, I don't have a huge pension. To have a very small pension. That to talk to Scott is to listen to him complain. I wasn't complaining. I just t I was telling her where it's at. I was telling her, you know. Uh, I don't know why she doesn't do a story on that. I'm yeah, doing, I'd love to hear. I'm that. doing a lot better here. I'm grateful that you know you brought me here, and I, I love I w love working here. I told Penny, I go, boy, Scott picked a really good career. <laughs> Sucks. My son goes, I want to do what you do. I go, no, you don't. <laughs> I, 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 said, no I said, run for the hills. I have no money and I have a pension. <laughs> right. Run for the hills, I said. Yeah. You don't want to be in radio. Yeah, Scott bitches about his money situation to everyone. Uh, I mean, no, you just, no, I have a bitch to anybody. That, everyone. That should be everyone. a story. I used, I I used to, to bitch that. about it. Yeah. I haven't bitched anybody since we've been here. Except right. Penny. Since I took the penny in. Yeah. yeah, except Penny. <laughs> but I was bitching about my previous money situation. All right. Not the one now. It's you're always also, a bitch fest. You're also forgetting about last week's lunch, too. Oh, <laughs> twice! Right, I went out last week once with you, and this week he's starting to like those free lunches. Yeah. With you. that was the only time, though. That was the first time last We've week. We've been here two months. You've had two goes, lunches. Yeah, that's Audie makes more money than me. Let him buy me lunch. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I, I'd be glad to buy Audie lunch. Any, I know anytime, anytime. Yes, yes, Ralph. Oh my God, Scott is so dull. I know. Oh, look who's talking. You know what's so funny? Uh, 
he didn't even get to get roasted. <laughs> like you bailed on his roast. Well, yeah, no, me. we're gonna. I hate that door. If that door isn't fixed, I'm gonna we're, kill myself. You know what? We're working. At, we they yeah, between to, the floor and the and the door. It is so noisy in the here. The door will be Seriously, fixed today. You, you don't hear it over the air. You don't. No. Oh, thank not at God. All. God, it drives me. I nuts. don't know how you can't. I hear it in here. It, it is loud. Hulk it. Hogan couldn't open it. I swear, you don't even hear it. I would hear that. You know me. <laughs> Well, we hear it. Hey, can I just tell you something about Scott and uh, finance and stuff? It's really funny. The day I met Scott, right, the yeah. first day he ever worked for us, he had been out of work for a year at ABC. Not a year. It was... and, or, or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. But he had a kid on the way, and within the first 10 minutes of talking to Scott, I found out that he hadn't worked for X amount of time, that he'd maxed out all his credit cards, and that he was deep in debt. Yeah. And he hasn't stopped talking about money since. Yeah, and everybody <laughs> likes to be around a real upper like Scott. <laughs> I've been in debt since then. No, but I mean, the day I met him, like, I knew him for five minutes. He's like, That's yeah, nothing. The day I met him, he goes, I was, a, I was an, uh, an engineer at WPLJ. They never paid me. My first <laughs> wife, I finally Never's saved so up bad. enough money for a house. Scott. And then my wife left me for the gym instructor. And then uh, she got in shape and she left me and she took the house Scott, like, you, know what? Like, no. you know what why don't i go in my backyard and hang myself Scott, you know, you know what? what i i don't want to pile on but talking, yeah, ahead, talking to on. you is not exactly like talking to tony robbins <laughs> <laughs> you know, how is, is there such a thing as an unmotivational speaker <laughs> if you're like a, a room full of type a executives yeah. and they just want to chill they just talk to scott scott's for a guy who would think a little bit too good about themselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what about what about a career as an unmotivational there speaker? you go Listen you can make that. a lot of money that you're, way right, right. You could transfer guys who are arrogant assholes. Yeah, for people who work too hard and workaholics, they, you lecture them on the, the joys of doing nothing That's right. and, and complaining. The yeah. other rat was Scott, you're going back to you know what he was at ABC as an engineer. I got the before that, he worked in recording. Yeah, you know I mean? I, I've gotten record, that rap too. Which was a much higher level of what he's do than what he's doing. But the now. best rap is how he finally bought a house and then the ex wife took it. Uh, <laughs> that's the best. She, she didn't take it. She we had I know, I know the whole story. Yeah. We had to sell it because she wanted the money from it. And do you know what that uh, the apartment would be worth today? <laughs> he told me a cl he told me a classic Stern show history story too that he reiterated me yesterday. Lunch when he when he got the free toupee in a week. Uh, <laughs> and it did nothing but irritate his hand. Yeah. got it. Get out of here. Pulled off. I said, you get any money? I let it go. No, they just gave me the wig. They, they gave him a free toupee. <laughs> and he just got bumps on his head. Yeah. I said, you got no money? He's like, nah, they just gave me the wig for free. That irritated his head. And they glued these snaps to his head. And then he snapped in the toupee. Every time I take it off, it ripped my skin off of my skull. Oh. <laughs> look at the bright side, Scott. At least they didn't do surgery on your head. Yeah. But you look, and then you knew it was toward the end of the week because Scott never cleaned the toupee oh. for a whole week. No, and, he, he, I did. He, no, he would take it off and shampoo it. but I'd wash my car with it. <laughs> but when he did it by himself, it looked really nasty. <laughs> but then when the people came in who were the sponsor, they were embarrassed, they would fix the toupee. Right. Right. It was great, too, because it didn't even look real for a second. No. <laughs> there was a maintenance thing going on. You know, they did the thing. Like, they advertised for six months, but Scott kept it for another six months. Right. So then at that point, they're like, listen, you're on your own. And there was a maintenance that was pricey that Scott just didn't want to do. <laughs> Correct, Scott? That's when my hair left me again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when we attached the fishing pole to it. Yeah, as soon as somebody wasn't a sponsor, they would they would bail out on Scott. <laughs> leave poor Scott in the lurch. But wait, now everyone's used to my full head of hair. And the thing was, the thing was like you had to have it cleaned every three months, and it was like a hundred bucks. And Scott's like, I'm not paying that. Scott you know what I love? Constantly leaving him. What I loved about him was that he would then, after wearing the hair for six months. Since they wouldn't pay for it anymore, he took the hair off, and then he looked balder than ever because right. we're used to it's the pay. <laughs> Suddenly it was like, oh my oh, god! It was so funny. I, we had so much fun. With I look Scott's at pictures of me with that now, and I'm like, how did I ever want to wear that thing? Scott, and could all... you do it again just for old times' sake? Yeah. Well, all I know is, is that thing. <laughs> like I would see him, and he looked horrible with the toupee, and then he'd take it off, and I go, he looks even more horrible yeah, without it. I remember because it was like, yeah, when he first put it on, I'm like, yeah, you do look a little younger. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was uh, I brought in my wedding video. You know working on that for in demand we're pulling clips from it and scott's at the, at my wedding and he's bald yet he looks like he has more hair hmm. like he, i think he's gone balder oh of course <laughs> you he know has. what i mean well, well, remember that one sponsor where scott had to wash shampoo his head every night yeah. and scrub it uh, no, 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 he, 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 he had to scrub it and then suction cup it right. no, but, it was like a massager it was like uh, it was <laughs> and he was convinced hairs were growing in <laughs> No, I see baby hairs. It's working. It's I working. see, I see baby hairs. I was suctioning last night. I'm like a baby pocket pine. Did you get paid for that? No, I never got paid for that. <laughs> Look at my quills. Uh, I think it would be great, like if you really started a business 
where you were un- unmotivational Unmotiv- speaker. You'd be the only one in the country, and you, and you get up there and go, oh, hello, executives. You are all working so hard. I'm here to teach you the opposite. The yeah, yang got, got to, to your on. ying. I'm here to tell you that the words I can't are okay. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that dreams are impossible. <laughs> I'm here to say you too could be a loser, and it's no shame. There is an I in team. <laughs> it's beautiful. And I'm a loser. It is beautiful for all of us to accept that we're just another cog in the wheel. Not- I'm here to tell you that clouds have no silver lining. They all mean rain. <laughs> so many of you have spent your lives searching for the spotlight to stand out from the crowd. As one who has never stood out, I am here to tell you there's a lot less pressure if you live like me. The Life at the end is of a my... black hole. Life is a big black hole that And I sucks. am like a dust bunny under the bed. <laughs> now, in conclusion, I would like everyone to stand up and shout out, I am a loser. <laughs> I want you to go to your windows and say... I'm mad as hell, and everybody yells back, who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know I'm mad about? as hell, and I'm going to continue to take this. Howard, you know what's great about Scott? Everybody there is having the time of their life, except Scott. He still looks miserable. Yeah. Yeah, everybody here is super happy yeah. and serious. You know I am what? very happy here. What, are you kidding me? Let me say this. I'm when we got here, <laughs> the first week we got here, or, you know, it was, I guess, one of those shows or days that we came in to learn the equipment. Yeah. We were all standing around, and everybody was talking. And everybody had the same question for Scott. Was he going to be able to move faster here than he ever did at K-Rock? You know how slow he walks? And for the first week, Scott tried to quicken his pace. Now he's back to that same Yeah, then I pulled my back slow. out, and that was the end of that. Oh, yeah, he almost had a heart attack. I wasn't comfortable moving quickly. <laughs> yeah. See? See what happened? For yeah. all of you executives who stress out and race from task to task, I'm here to tell you, slow down to a snail's pace. Do, we'll, do I look like Carl Lewis to you? <laughs> no stress. When the world says move faster, I say no way. Like You know who needs Scott? Uh, uh, unmotivational tape from Scott is that guy on that show Blowout. Johnny, whatever. <laughs> the Jonathan Hair Products guy. Right. He, he needs a few notches knocked off his fucking belt. <laughs> What are you doing watching that show, Artie? I saw, I was watching it last night. <laughs> Artie, we found your there's, little gay spot. There's smoking, there's smoking hot chicks on it. Yeah, whatever. Sure. You know, if I can be of an inspiration to all of you at all, <laughs> I want you to know that eventually the sun itself will burn out. <laughs> <laughs> there is no point to anything. And you everything will, will go cold and will freeze. And you will die. all die one day. Thank you and good night. Enjoy your penthouses. Global warming will make Manhattan underwater property. Yes, grow fins and gills like me. You just sent Scott out to, like, the new school or, like, you know, those places that have those little classes. Oh, the learning addict. The learning (laughs) addict, yeah. I have learned... How old are you now? 53. I have learned in my 53 hard years of life (laughs) that you will die, your children will die, and your hair will never grow back (laughs) despite any kind of suction cup life hands you. When others say why not, I say why. Why bother? When when others say why not, I just stare off at the wall. (laughs) The world is a black place just like my lungs. It all comes from my mother. I, I got to blame her. She, I mean, she was. Oh my goodness! She used to say that the Uh-oh. the fam- No, I'm telling you. The fa- yeah, well, she used to meet tell us. Drink. She used to tell us. You know, may she rest in peace. She used to tell us <laughs> the family has a black cloud over it. I mean, and that's where the that negative coat of arms. Yeah, that, <laughs> I'm telling you. She my really mother said brought that? me into a room yes. at a young age to show me the family coat of arms, <laughs> and all it was was a black blotch. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, The family, she always said the family is cursed. The cloud follows us wherever we go, and there's no getting around it. My mother 
said to me at a young age, of course, she was a gypsy woman <laughs> who had bared the scar of the werewolf her entire life. <laughs> <laughs> the family curse will be yours, Scott, one day. Your burden to bear. You'll be a bald, black lunged, lazy worker who goes. This is your legacy. Whose only fun in life will be a bowling league. <laughs> And then you'll really fuck things up by admitting that you had an affair and cheated on your wife. <laughs> once, just once. <laughs> I believe it was Mahatma Gandhi that said, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Gandhi was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and good night, ladies and gentlemen. All right, look, i got to take a break. Uh, thank you, Scott the Engineer. Good luck to you. And well, your... Thank you. I think he so... needs a meet the shrink set. <laughs> yeah. Sorry but... I went out to lunch. Why would your mom say there was a curse on the family? Oh, that is, I, dude, she... honestly, I wouldn't know how to deal with that as an adult. Thinking Always. Back, think, how mm -hmm. old were you when she said that? It, as far back as I can remember. Like, she used to say it every day. My though. early wow. teens. You know, uh, from my early teens on. will come out tomorrow. <laughs> Do you remember a time where, like, you were like looking at life like maybe life is just a bowl of cherries yeah. and then your mom f kept telling you that there was a curse on the family and then you just started slouching <laughs> over and your hair started falling out of your head i did <laughs> i mean god <laughs> you know, you really you in my early 20s go ahead um i had just graduated from school i got a job in a recording studio full of optimism had it you were a winner. Life was going great. There's right. nothing better than hope when you're young. It's Li great. Yes. Life was going great. And then uh, I got married to my first wife. Yes. Everything was going great. We were right. getting along, and all of a sudden, boom, the cloud covered me. <laughs> got divorced. Got, you know, had to give up you know, all of my house, that my pension, it. my job, my money, everything. Right. <laughs> and that's when you knew your mother was right, done. right? I was done. And so then you said, why bother? <laughs> no, and then I met my current wife, and <laughs> things got better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, the family the All right. All right. My current wife learned to go grow deaf. <laughs> <laughs> and then when did you start balding? Really young? I am my mid twenties. <laughs> but does your wife stand just outside the cloud and it just rains on you? <laughs> No, I, I bring everybody into that yeah. cloud. I think anyone associated with the family has the curse. Yeah. Did you tell your son that he has no hope to stop dreaming? Yeah, no, you don't I, give him that speech, do you? No, no, I don't. No, never, never give him that speech. Son. I mean, my sister is cursed, and, and she's got she's got the, the whole thing going on too. She started and, growing hair on her face. <laughs> she's bald too. What do you mean? What, how is she? Cursed? Oh, I can't even get into that. <laughs> I don't even want to know about that. The family curse. Oh my God. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry to hear about your curse. I was just brought up to be very negative. I'm never happy with anything. It's just one of those uh, mental wacko things that people go through. Some people have ADD. I have negativity that was bred into me for some goddamn reason. Who knows? Does it piss you off, though, when they talk about it on the air and, and they bring you up? Howard even went as far as to mention you as a, uh, an unmotivational speaker. Perfect uh, field for me. I think I can do very well there, you know? It's just amazing. It, like they said... You know, you, you, you'll, you'll open a funeral parlor and people will stop dying. So you're born to lose. Absolutely. When I first came to Sirius, I looked in the uh, studio where Sal and Richard were. And it's such a beautiful, clean, neat working environment. You can see it's all high tech and it's really... Yeah, they've got tons of equipment. Yeah. It's amazing. And now in two short months, the room is filled with just garbage all over the floors there's garbage everywhere. And oh. really, I, uh, Gary, the two guys today should go in there and clean out everything, throw everything out, and let's keep this place looking pristine. We've got a nice work environment. You know what? I was going to talk to you about this. You know, yeah. I, I think it's, it is their office, so I didn't want to give them a hard time on it, but there's lots of pictures on the walls of, like, porn chicks and naked chicks. And I know the door is closed, but sometimes it's open, and it just didn't seem appropriate. Am, yeah. I, am I off? Uh, I don't mind the pictures so much. What I do mind is the intense garbage all over the floor. The, 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 it's it's like it's like a, a it's turning into a dumping ground. And what I need you to do is um, take all the interns, uh, bring a, a big plastic garbage bag in there, and anything that's on the floor just throw out. No, uh, that's what my mom used to do to me in my room. Totally emasculated. This is stuff from the mail that we got to go through. 
and when you see these boxes, <laughs> these are boxes from K Rock that we still need. And all this stuff here is uh, for the for the movie. This is all movie props. Me and Richard like it this way. This is our mess. This is all mail that people send in that we got to go through. Yeah. Porno that we got to check out. And this is all important. This is all the notes here for the show that Howard needs every day. I have to log every time Howard plays something. There's a, a fun. Uh, These are our fun like props. A dildo, a prop that we need around. Greg, if Rich wants to like smack me in the face of dildo, or if I want to do this to Rich, like you know stuff like that. <laughs> These are just props that we use on each other. All right, stop it! Stop it! These are just things that would <laughs> All right, very good. Listen, that's Frank. We'll meet the girls, and we've got a lot more to do. These are just things that we do every day. <laughs> Well, we got him. What up? <laughs> Ow! Stop it! You're gonna eat it. Okay. I'm out of breath. Let me out. I don't. All right. <laughs> okay. You see, you can never mess with this guy because he just doesn't stop. You started. You're the one that bought this crap. <laughs>